Laura, I don't have a lot to say or don't even want to get in your way. So why don't you take it from here? Okay. All right. So where, where, what I was sharing were three words to remember that, that um, in any circumstance, and I, was, I, I, I said that so amazingly, it just rolled out when I was writing up my, my notes for my talk, it, under any conditions and any circumstance, and here's a perfect example. Um, so <laughs> we have a perfect demonstration. There are three words to remember. And uh, they started when uh, they started from an experience that Larry and I had in the Olympic Mountains when we were hiking. And uh, oh, it had been a long day of hiking. Uh, starting with the night before, I had uh, I, I had hiking boots on, um, and my feet, both feet, were just like one big blister. Larry had wrapped up my feet. I put him in my shoes. I was using my hiking poles to hike through the mountains. Uh, oh, there, I'm back. Okay. Because I was on a particular trail uh, and, uh, and we had to circle back on the trail. So I had these incredibly sore feet, but so long as I had my poles and I got into the scenery that was around me, I could be okay. So here we're hiking and hiking, and we start going downhill. And I'm thinking, after about 15 minutes or so, I'm thinking, we're not supposed to be going downhill, but then we kept going and going. We get about a mile downhill from the top of the mountain areas where we were, and we realized we'd bypassed our campsite by a mile, and then it was a mile back uphill. Now, at that point, I was so exhausted. I totally broke down and I just wept. <laughs> I mean, we're talking Rocky Mountain trails, a mile uphill. I just wept. And then after the weeping, I paused. I, I, I drunk in the, the environment that was around me, the the energy and the light of the, of the nature surrounding me. I prayed. I just held my whole body in the light, which was in total exhaustion in that moment. And then I opened my eyes and started going back uphill. So the three words to remember that bring meaning to any circumstance or any condition, uh, thwarted intentions, uh, unforeseen difficulties, the three words to remember are pause, pray, and go. Pause, pray, and go. So if you remember those words, you've got everything that brings meaning to every moment. And you have the centeredness and you have the peace and the power. Now, there's a lot in the past year that has thrown us off center, that has had us realize that all that we thought we knew on how to get through life. Anybody think you pretty much knew how to get through life? I mean, who's, who's like, I'll, I'll be kind and say, who's over 40 here? Yeah, by the time you're over 40, you, you know how to get through life. You, you, you've got it pretty well down by 50. Oh, you're, you're, you really, you really know what you're doing by 60. You're ready to just sit back and let the automatic kick in uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. But in the past year and a half, all of that got turned on its ear. Totally, totally turned on its ear. We all discovered that life is not, um, how can I say it? Life even, is not a long-term plan. We make long-term plans to draw us into the next step and the next step of life. 
but life itself is not a long-term plan. It is a day to day to day to day and today experience. It is an experience of this moment right now. Whatever is happening in this moment is life. And it is happening to draw forth meaning from the depth of your being, value. Uh, how can I say it? Validity, conscious awareness of who you are being moment to moment, conscious awareness of all that surrounds you, conscious awareness of how you can even better connect with all that is around you. And you can find this, you can find this in the moment to moment to moment life that you are living if you remember to pause, pray, and go. If you remember that when things start breaking down, and we had a beauty this morning, pause, pray, and go. This gets us into that transcendent space that really, really brings the depth and meaning to life. Um, there's a book I used uh, when I was putting this talk together. Uh, camera went off again. There's a book I used when I was putting this talk together. It's called Deepak, or, or, or it's called The Future of God, and it's by Deepak Chopra. And it's okay. It doesn't have to be, honey. I have the PowerPoint. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. That's why it goes off. Okay. So this book, there has three worlds that we live inside of and that and and it and those three worlds are the map to our higher spiritual awareness the material world the subtle world and the transcendent world and deepak describes each of these worlds he says this is the world of duality the material world good and evil light and dark contend here Events unfold in a straight line. Each person is a tiny speck in the vastness of nature. We journey through this world driven by desire. We journey through this world driven by desire. This is where, and I'm not saying goals are a bad thing because I set them all the time, but um, Sometimes when we do make our plans, God laughs. Or God uses our plans to guide us to something even higher. And we must be willing to release what we think is the next best right thing for something even better if it comes to that. In this world, of duality of right and wrong when we're struggling and we've got to make it and we're competing and, and we've got to do the right thing or else people are going to think badly of us. Uh, we, we need to remember that there, is, there are bigger worlds that we carry with us that are lying underneath this material world, the worlds that give this material world all of its meaning. We're taken to those worlds through a couple of things, through conscious prayer and meditation, or through tragedy or crisis. Tragedy or crisis stops us in our tracks, has us reevaluate ourselves, and takes us to the subtle and transcendent world. This past week, I don't know about you, uh, well, I do know about you because I know we are all one in this. This past week, my heart has so been present with what has been going on in Seaside, Florida, um, and, and the people who've lost family members, and the courageous workers who are working to go through the rubble to find any survivors. Um, my heart has just been so present with them. 
And that's where the subtle world comes in. Uh, the subtle world is the transitional world. Good and evil are not rigidly separated. What's right? What's wrong here? Light and dark merge into shades of gray. Behind the mask of materialism, we sense a presence. We are driven through the subtle world by a craving for meaning. And so even deeper than looking to the right and wrong of what happened in Florida, which we will be doing as well as a humanity, we are looking at what does it mean? What is it telling us about the preciousness of life? What is it telling us about the preciousness of this moment of life? When we pause and we go to prayer and we listen to that transcendent voice, we find the ability to be completely present to what is in our material world, to what we feel in our subtle world. And we go to the transcendent world. You notice I'm skipping some slides because I know the time is shorter. Uh, so here's Deepak Chopra on the transcendent world. This is the source of reality itself. At the source, there is oneness. And what do you call your wonderful group? The Center for Universal Oneness. At the source, there is oneness, a state of unity. Nothing is divided or in conflict. The veil of materialism has fallen away. And what happens when the veil falls? One of my favorite Bible verses. 2 Corinthians 3.18, it acknowledges both our process as human beings that we are growing and evolving, and it also acknowledges our oneness with spirit and how we experience that when the veil drops away. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, the glory of the Lord is us as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. And this is what we get in touch with when we see the events on television, when life itself is turned on its ear, when we don't know what's next, when we are in an existence of uncertainty, then we find the meaning, the depth, the power in each precious moment and each precious thing we do. Larry shared a story with me yesterday. And uh, it was a story of a man who, when he was 16 years old, 15, Larry's correcting me, when he was 15 years old, he was working on an archaeological dig. And I will just read some of that story to you. He says, I was talking to one of the archaeologists one day during our lunch break, and he asked those kinds of getting to know you questions you ask young people. Do you play sports? What's your favorite subject? And I told him, no, I don't play any sports. I do theater. I'm in choir. I play the violin and piano. I used to take art classes. And he went, wow, that's amazing. And I said, oh, no, I'm not good at any of them. And he said something then that I will never forget and which absolutely blew my mind because no one had ever said anything like it to me before. He said, I don't think being good at things is the point of doing them. I think you've got all these wonderful experiences with different skills and that all teaches you things and makes you an interesting person no matter how well you do them. 
And that honestly changed my life, said the writer. He said, because I went from a failure someone who hadn't been talented enough at anything to excel to someone who did things because I enjoyed them. I did things because I enjoyed them. And that's what it all boils down to. That's why we, what, what do we do? We pause, we pray, then we go and we enjoy each step of the journey. My feet hurt for the rest of our two or three days left on the mountain trails, but I still was enjoying every moment until I got to a great place where I could soak my feet and nurse them back to health. I was enjoying the scenery. I was enjoying the fresh air. I wasn't a great hiker. Uh, I was slow. I, I'm a city person. I have, I'm a tenderfoot. No, it, like it was proven. I'm a tenderfoot. But I was enjoying what I was doing. And to pause and pray allowed me to go into that enjoyment. So we are going to pause, pray, and go right now. Um, and as I look to our time, good, uh, we're going to have a meditation uh, based on these, these subsets of, of pause, pray, and go. So I invite you to become still and comfortable. Okay to center become centered and there we go <sighs> and you know when i stopped on that mountain trail and i paused for a moment and i let myself just weep out of exhaustion it was just pure exhaustion that had me weeping i just let myself weep and then I was able to hear, to notice my breath. And so I'm going to ask you just to close your eyes, to set aside whatever is on your mind. And the way to do it is not to try to suppress it. If it runs through your mind, just let it go. Like a squirrel running by in the yard of your mind, just let it keep going, set it aside, and breathe. Be aware of your breath. And as you breathe, use your imagination to envision breathing in light. Breathe that light in deeply to your solar plexus, to your lower body, Breathe it in all the way down to the soles of your feet. Let that light fill your lungs as you breathe it in. And then move upward through your throat. 
and your neck and your shoulders. Let that light move out your arms and your fingertips and up through the crown of your head until you are the light. And in that light, be still. And now it is time to release that light. To breathe it out into the world. And as you do, if anything comes to your mind that touches your heart, that concerns you in any way, if there is any challenge in any relationship, if there is any unexpected Expected difficulty in anything you are doing. Bring it into the light. See it filled with light and then breathe that light out into the world. Until it touches all conditions and circumstances. And so in one Breath in and out. I'm asking you to breathe in the light and let it the light fill all things in you. And then breathe out the light and let the light fill all things in the world. So breathe in the light. And let it fill every part of you and then breathe out the light. And let it fill every part of your world. Yes, even the collapsed building in Seaside. See it in the light right now. Souls have lifted up to the next dimension of existence. Souls are doing courageous things to support and to save each other. There is love present, there is light present. And in that, the healing will begin. And so finally, it is time to go, to act from transcendent awareness in all that you say and do. And so in one more quiet moment, commit yourself to acting from this awareness that you are the light, that who you really are lives in a transcendent world, experiencing feelings in a subtle world and putting them into action in the material world. So in this moment, commit your actions to that transcendence, to the light.
And so it is. Take a deep breath. And know that when we bring the transcendent world into the feelings of the subtle world and the experience of the material world, we have gone to that higher place of which Rumi wrote the following. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Be in the light. Be at peace. Pause, pray, and go. God bless you. That's the message for today.